हेलो स्टूडेंट्स सो दिस इज़ आर लास्ट लेक्चर फॉर दिस कोर्स सो इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल जस्ट हैव लाइक लिटल मोर डिटेल अबाउट हाइपोथेसिस टेस्टिंग विच वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन द लास्ट फ्यू वीडियोस सो हियर यू सी सपोज यू हैव अ नल हाइपोथेसिस एच नॉट okay so we have we can have these following uh, situations for example uh, h not is true or h not is false this is the reality and what we are doing our decision is do not reject h not or reject h not when we do not reject h not and h not is true it means that we made a correct decision when h not was false and we reject h not then also we make a correct decision decision but when H not is true and we reject H not. That is a type one error. We call it as type one error. And when H not is false and you do not reject, it is type two error. Okay, is that okay? So, for example, uh, if if a manufacturer is claiming something that my uh, say suppose manufacturer is claiming that my uh, mean lifetime for a battery is five years. okay so suppose it is actually 5 years but we reject still like it is good but still we reject it so it is manufacturers you know uh, like loss because it was a good product still we rejected it and here if it was false like it was not a good product uh, uh, product but still we accept it so that is a consumers loss so this kind of analysis is there so we should know like type 1 error and type 2 error so type 1 error is when h not is true but you still reject h not that is possible right because we have a significance level 0.05 so there are chances that you will uh, make wrong decisions and when the decision is like this that h not is false but you do not reject it that is type 2 error so type 1 error is rejection of null hypothesis when it is true and type 2 error is uh, non rejection of null hypothesis when it is false so probability of type 1 error is called the level of significance we denote it with alpha it is also called the size of the test these are the notations names and possibility or probability of type 2 error is called beta now you have uh, with with uh, like procedure you will have a testing procedure you can always associate your testing procedure with alpha and beta two parameters right now consider the following situation suppose a certain type of a uh, cold vaccine uh, is known to be only 25% effective after a period of 2 years like if you give a vaccine to somebody uh, after 2 years the vaccine's effect will be only 25% like out of 4 only one will not be affected by the virus uh, three will be affected so there is a new vaccine that is introduced and it is believed that the new vaccine is better okay so so what is our null hypothesis we 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 are saying here the uh, like p is the probability that you will survive for the new vaccine uh, we want to prove that it is more than 25% because for the uh, old vaccine it was 25% that probability that you will not get the virus is 25% but here we want that our new vaccine to be uh, uh, to to have p greater than 1 by 4 so our null hypothesis is going to be p is equal to 1 by 4 and our alternative hypothesis is going to be p greater than 1 now to test the hypothesis what we are doing we have given this new vaccine to 20 people and if more than 8 people surpass 2 years without contracting the disease we reject h not in the favor of h1 so this kind this is our procedure which we are performing okay so now you can see that if out of 20 people 8 people are you know Im immune to that disease after getting the new vaccine that it means that 8 over 20 that is approximately you have 2 over 5 that is 0.4 right earlier it was 0.02 so that means that the new vaccine is better <coughs> so now uh, here this 8 is somehow defines our significance level okay because 8 uh, you are considering if less than 8 uh, number of people are immune then we don't consider uh, new vaccine to be good 
otherwise we consider the new vaccine to be good so it means that 8 is our significance level level we call it as critical value we call 8 as our critical value <coughs> Now the test statistics here is the number of people okay who will pass who will surpass two years without contracting the disease like in the last uh, questions we have seen that we had uh, z value or t value as our statistics here p this number p p is the uh, fraction of people or number of people they are our uh, statistics all the values greater than 8 constitutes the critical region where we reject H0. So we have a situation like this. This is 8 number of people. If we are in this region, so this is called critical region. And here we are going to reject H0. And here if you have number of people less than 8, this is our acceptance region. And here we are going to uh, accept H0. Okay. So here we have this situation. This is your acceptance region and this is your critical region. Now, I told you what is alpha. Alpha is uh, the probability of type 1 error. What was type 1 error? So that means we reject H0 with the, when it is true. That was your type 1 error. So when will you reject H0? When you are in the critical region. That is X is greater than 8. But it is true. It means that P was actually 0.25. It means that even after the new vaccine is introduced, your P is still 0.25. But the number of people who, like in your survey, they are greater than 8. So if, if this is the situation, we are going to get type 1 error. And we want to compute its probability. Now here you see, <coughs> this is a binomial process. For example, if you are giving vaccine to 20 people, each one can be immune or contract disease, immune or contract disease. They are independent events and probability of contracting is 0.25. So <coughs> this probability will be the CDF for the binomial distribution. So that will be X from 9 to 20 binomial PDF X 20 1 by 4. So you can use the table to compute this value. So this will be 1 minus X from 0 to 8 B X 20 1 by 4. So you get... 0 0.0409 so this is the probability of time type 1 error and we call it as alpha now since this is a small number so it means that in this process of you know testing the new vaccine there there are less chances that you will make a type 1 error now if we want to compute beta beta will be your type 2 error but you cannot compute beta unless until you have a specific alternative hypothesis what does that mean for example here in the last case we had h0 is p0 uh, p is equal to 1 by 4 and h1 was p0 equal to 1 by 4 or greater than 1 by 4 so <coughs> if we have a specific value for h1 for example uh, this is my null hypothesis that h0 is 0.25 and i have a specific alternative hypothesis means that i assume that after the vaccine is given <coughs> p becomes 0.5 in this case, I can find the value of beta also. So, beta is type 2 error probability. So, that is what is type 2 error that you accept H0 even when it is false. So, it means that when we will accept H0 if X is less than or equal to 8 and still it is false, middle of, uh, you have P is equal to 0.5. So, <coughs> we are looking at the probability of, again, this is a binomial process. So, you are looking for summation x from 0 to 8 b x 21 by 2 this number is 0.2517 so there are 25 percent chances that you will make probability uh, like type 2 error <coughs> fine so now what kind of procedure we would like to have we would like to have a procedure for which type 1 and type 2 error probabilities are both small <coughs> but if you try to play with your critical value for example the number 8 you sh shift to that uh, that number to 7 okay like it means that you increase your critical region in that case <coughs> if you make the computations again if you do all the calculations again as we have done above only the thing is now you'll take your critical value to be 7 in that case you will see that your alpha will become this 0 0.1018 so you have increased it significantly 10 percent initially it was 4 percent and beta becomes 13 percent initially it was 25 percent so you can see that if you try to decrease beta, <coughs> alpha will be increased and vice versa. So it means that 
for a fixed sample size if you increase decrease the value of alpha it will lead to increase in the value of beta and vice versa so <laughs> is there any method you can increase decrease both alpha and beta the only way to do this is you increase your sample size okay so this is some kind of analysis for error there is one last thing which i want to tell something called power of a test power of a test is the probability of rejecting h not given that a specific alternative is true so that will be 1 minus probability of accepting h not <coughs> when a specific alternative hypothesis is true this is nothing but beta so 1 minus beta is defined as the power of the test so given any procedure you can always find the power of the procedure and then you can compare different procedures using the power of the procedures so <coughs> different types of tests can be compared using power of the test so this was our syllabus for this course of ucs 410 okay so this is till here you will get your uh, like in est you will have your uh, test among whatever we have covered in these 39 lectures all the best students if you have any doubts you can always come to my office